The average 14-year-old doesn't spend much time thinking abstractly or questioning the origin of life, but multidisciplinary scientist and astrobiologist Dr. Bruce Damer wasn't your average 14-year-old. And that question, and many others, circulated his thoughts while hiking through the Kamloops sagebrush in 1976. And I noticed one spring when I was 14, the mariposa lilies coming up. And they were such a beautiful plant, a beautiful structure from a simple start, like a little bulb. And I, I asked the question, how could a simple thing make a complex thing? And then I asked the question of how could you make all of this? How did, where did all of life come from? And that's where I had the thought experiment and the inspiration to work on the origin of life for my whole life. Damer's thoughts and ideas continued to take shape and evolve and led to him writing a series of articles for local newspapers. As a final project that he left for the school, he made a drawing making some suggestions and predictions of what we might see in the future. And I remember looking at it just a few years ago and a lot of those things that he was predicting they're here, they're, they've materialized. At 19, he proposed his plans to NASA with hopes of getting hired. They wrote back, which encouraged him to pursue a formal education and aim for NASA in the future. He wanted to look into uh, space exploration and simulations and all this. Well, how do you do that? You know, start off with a program, get people together that could write programs like that. In 1981, Damer enrolled in the Nascent Computing Science Program at TRU. And I wrote a program that drew a space shuttle launching. So that was the one of my first combinations of computers and space, which I still do for NASA today. We still render and visualize future missions. So it, it started all the way back at Caribou College in, in 81 and 82. He continued developing his passion for computing in the mid-1980s as a University of Victoria co-op student performing leading-edge research for IBM. Later, he worked for a startup company called Elixir, where he developed some of the earliest PC user interfaces. In the 1990s, he led the community that brought the first multi-user virtual worlds to the internet. Since 2000, he's been supporting NASA and the space industry with numerous direction-setting simulations and mission designs. Damer's most notable and recent research focuses on his co-authored hypothesis that the emergence of life occurred on land within fluctuating hot spring pools, rather than deep in the ocean as previously thought. Many are calling it a paradigm shift in science as it changes the way we think about how biology first emerged and suggests that other planets, such as Mars, might have possessed similar conditions that could support life. Damer currently serves on the NASA Mars 2020 team where he contributes to deciding where to send the next rover searching for evidence of life on the red planet. He's continuing his research with colleague Professor David Deemer at University of California, Santa Cruz. They conduct live chemical testing in the lab and in the field at Hot Spring Pools. Recently, their work was featured on the cover of Scientific American. The most exciting part of all this work is that we may have discovered that we did not come from an individual. There was no set of individual competing protocells at the origin of life, we came from a common community. He is principal scientist at the Biota Institute, an associate researcher in the Department of Biomolecular Engineering at University of California, Santa Cruz, an associate of the NASA Astrobiology Center, treasurer of the International Society for the Study of Origin of Life, and founder of several companies in Silicon Valley. One of his companies is developing a new spacecraft that could harvest water, fuel, and minerals from asteroids and help open a path to space for humans in this century. Another company is using origin of life science to develop a powerful new therapy fighting viral infections and head off the next global pandemic. Things are better for humans than they've ever been, but we're not telling ourselves that story. And I think if we can change the story to more positive narrative, we can transform our civilization and meet the challenges we have ahead.